Okay, so now I've got this new MCU Captain Marvel origin nailed down. I really do think I got it this time. Uh, in fact, I kind of am putting a spoiler warning on this video because I think if you want to go in and discover this for yourself when you see the movie, you might be a bit miffed with me for outlining it all here. Uh, but yeah, yeah. By Jove, I think I've got it. All right, so when Kevin Feige said he wanted to change up Captain Marvel's origin to make it less Green Lantern-y, apparently someone raised their hand and said, have you ever seen She-Ra? Because basically, that's what you have here, a Green Lantern She-Ra hybrid. Uh, and after initially being misled by the Entertainment Weekly coverage uh, like a week or so ago, I have now pieced together the setup for this film from the first trailer, which actually gives away a huge amount of the movie. And that makes sense because I think a lot of it's from the first act because those are the less uh, VFX, uh, you know, heavy part of the story. And that's usually what's ready for a trailer. Uh, but yeah, they gave it away. I'm really surprised they gave it away. All right, so basically, Carol Danvers starts out the movie as a member of the Kree's elite military unit, Star Force. Uh, she never is in the comics, uh, interestingly, but you're going to see how this works out. Uh, so uh, in the comics, though, the Kree are at war with the Skrulls. Is it a hot war or a cold war in this movie? We'll see. Uh, but, it would, you know, it would make sense that, and we've heard about a scene actually in Entertainment Weekly uh, where they're, you know, uh, on, a, on another planet, actually a planet where uh, vibranium comes from, interestingly enough. That's where that meteor might have come from uh, in, in the MCU in the past. Uh, but anyway, they're, they're, they're on a mission and the you know, scrolls might be in the mix, right? So clearly something goes wrong, right? And as we've seen in so many movies, uh, Carol Danvers gets separated from the rest of her team and crash lands chasing a scroll. so with that scroll on Earth. And she goes after it, as you do in those types of situations. Again, we've seen this type of story uh, as well. Now, going after this scroll, as you can see, she's wearing her Cree uniform on the subway in Los Angeles, going after that Cree dis uh, uh, um, disguised as a, 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 a very nice elderly woman, right? Um, she obviously captures the attention of Nick Fury, who's in the field like Coulson was, right? When Coulson was going around and doing all this, right? <laughs> going around and, and piecing together all the superheroes. So it's kind of nice to see Nick Fury in that uh, scenario. But anyway, he gives her some civilian clothing, including a shield hat, right? That's, where, that's why she's dressed like that. That's why the clothes don't quite fit. And then he takes her down to the basement uh, where he and Coulson, have, I, I'm guessing maybe that's the scroll she was after. Who killed it? Did she kill it? Uh, maybe, maybe Fury killed it, right? I mean, we're getting a little bit, I'd be interesting. People were so angry with things being killed in the DCEU. How are you going to feel when that starts to happen in the MCU? But they got a dead scroll there and they're uh, going to see exactly what they're dealing with in that uh, autopsy scene. Again, ripped from the comics. So I love it. But being on Earth, it starts to jog Carol's memory, as again is the way these things work, right? She remembers she was an Air Force pilot. She came in touch with something alien, which changed her. That's the Green Lantern part of the story. Now here's the change. Here's where the She-Ra stuff comes in, all right? So it would seem that Jude Law's Marvel. there's been some speculation that he's Jan Rog, uh, a villainous uh, Kree character, um, and, they, and Marvel won't confirm Jude Law's character's identity. But in the context that I've come up with, I bet he is Marvel. You're gonna see, it's, it's, it's complex. Well, actually I think it's simple, but it's emotionally complex and I like that. All right, so uh, Marvel, Jude Law, is what Carol Danvers is sent to intercept as an Air Force pilot in the past. And when he sees how she's changed after that explosion, he's like, I'm not leaving that here, right? It's too powerful. Or he's like, uh, the Kree want to stay off of Earth's radar and an altered member of the military will kind of draw attention. So I can't leave that uh, there as a, like a, a defensive situation. Maybe it's a little bit of both, right? He's like, I can't leave it here. And they're going to be kind of happy with me when I bring home something so powerful. Or will they? But anyway, I think he does take her back to the Kree planet Hala. She's unconscious, remember, right? And since in the comics, the Kree's artificial intelligence ruler, the Supreme Intelligence, has telepathy powers, among other powers, it could not be the Supreme Intelligence. It could just be a machine they have, right? If they want to simplify it, as we know Kevin Feige likes to do, maybe Ronan just gives the order, right? And what's the order? Well, it's not only make her think she's Kree, right? But maybe not let her have access to her full powers. And that would explain the initial 
initial downgrade. Why? Since she is powerful uh, on the subway, uh, the roof, the, the, the top of the subway train. That's what I think it is. So this is the story of She-Ra. So uh, for those of you who are, who are, you know, you probably are like, where have I heard She-Ra recently? Well, She-Ra, uh, and that's why it's on the minds of, I'm surprised, maybe more people will make this comparison, but DreamWorks Animation is bringing it back for Netflix, right? So uh, in the story of She-Ra, she's kidnapped by an evil ruler and his gang and brought to a different planet. And in the comics, Star Force is made up of villainous characters. Uh, She-Ra is then brainwashed into believing she's this leader's top lieutenant, just as we've heard Carol is on Star Force for Jude Law. Seriously, they're even copying some of the exact shots from the She-Ra animated movie. Um, and so, just like when She-Ra regained her memories and was able to access her full power, I believe Carol will do the same. You even have a shot here, it looks, of them like trying to undo maybe, uh, you know, or, or you know, you know, erase the memories that she's starting to get back. I think that's what that shot is later on in the trailer. Uh, and also in the trailer, you can see what she, she's facing off what seems to be Jude Law, and she's not too happy. Uh, but yes, I, I, I don't think that Jude Law is necessarily the evil Jan Rog. I think he's probably Marvell, who's just misguided and had to answer to the definitely evil Ronan the Accuser. I think that's why you see some sympathetic shots of him, or just the one shot of him in the trailer, being like, I knew this was a bad idea, and she's gonna be really angry with me, right? So that, it, that makes you wonder, why would she choose to leave Earth at the end of her movie, right? Because she just hasn't been there for the entirety of the MCU. Maybe it's to fight the Kree. Maybe some kind of redemption situation going on there, right? Maybe she's going to team up with Jude Law. Who knows? We'll see. As for the scrolls, if this is the scenario, it sounds a little bit more like a B storyline, right? Which, which I think would be great because that would uh, be setting it up just for secret invasion down the line after Infinity War. Uh, by the way, speaking of Star Force, in the comics, the very cool character, uh, also a villain, Deathbird from the Shi'ar becomes a member of the team. So maybe now that Disney Fox deal is done, Carol Danvers can open the door to the Shi'ar. They are awesome, regal, bird-like aliens from the X-Men uh, comics. So cool. Really a great, um, you know, if you want to meet some cool aliens, those are some cool aliens. Now, as you can see, this new origin story is really beautiful in its simplicity, just as, just as Feige likes it. I think it's a pretty good story, actually. I think it's full of intrigue. Uh, I think it's a good setup. I like it, but I, I think it would be nice to give credit where credit is due, though. They obviously can't credit Green Lantern because it's the competition, but I think a nod to she would be a nice thing to do. So what do you think? Uh, share your thoughts down below. Do you think I do you think that I got it? I think I got it. All right, so uh, or I, I'm like Sterling K. Brown there. Best moment in The Predator. Uh, Sterling K. Brown was great in that movie. But anyway, write your thoughts down below. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos, including more Captain Marvel coverage right now.